Hello everyone, this is Carrie with Everwood Creations, and today we are beginning a new series about Vetric V-Carve Basics. Starting this program for the first time can be a little overwhelming, so I'm going to take you through each tool and try to help you understand what it is for and when you might want to use it. For this video, we are going to discuss the overall layout of the program and look at the first group of buttons labeled File Operations. I'm using Vetric VCarve Pro 9.5 for this tutorial, so keep that in mind if you have a different version. Now first thing, when you open up the software, you get a kind of quick start menu. The screen has a lot of options on the left that will help you get started. First is Startup Tasks. This section allows you to either begin a new file or open one you have previously saved. Below that is a list of recently opened files, giving you quick access to the files you've worked on most recently. Clicking any of these will open the project without you having to navigate to it via the Open Existing File tool. Below those, we have video tutorials and online resources to help you out when you have questions. The Vetric Forum is the one I use the most, as there are many people asking and answering questions specifically about this software. And finally, we have a link to Design & Make, a partner of Vetric that sells pre-made 3D models. They have reasonable prices and even give you a small model project for free when you sign up, so make sure you at least visit long enough to get that. Now, if we go into the software by clicking Create a New File, the software will load and you will see a big white square in the viewing area and the Job Setup menu is open in the toolbar on the left. We'll go more in depth for the Job Setup tool in a minute, but first I want to explain the general layout of the software. Looking at the layout, there's a lot to take in here, but we can break it down so you understand all the information you're seeing. Up here we have the top menus. Many of these menus have functions available elsewhere as well, but they're a standard part of the view and will always be accessible no matter the view you're looking at, and also contain overall software functions. To the left, we have the main tab window. You can see at the bottom that there are four different tabs to choose from that change which toolbar is displayed, drawing, modeling, clip art, or layers. At the top of the toolbar, you have two small buttons. The first lets you switch to the toolpath toolbar. This hides the left toolbar and opens the right one that has the toolpath options in it. If you click it, you will see the word drawing, or whichever tab you were on, that lets you open it back up. But you will need to click the same button on the toolpath toolbar in order to switch back to the original view. You can also switch between the two toolbars with the F11 and F12 keys. Next to that, we have a small pin that is the Auto Hide button. Clicking it once minimizes the toolbar unless you access it. If you click it again, it will embed the toolbar into your display so that it's always there. I prefer to always have it showing, but it's down to personal preference. Back to the top. Over the viewing area, we have two tabs labeled 2D and 3D. This shows you what your project looks like in each type of view. We generally do most of our work in the 2D tab, but once we have tool paths, we can use the 3D view to see what it looks like. You can keep them separate like this, or you can view them both at the same time, depending on your needs. If you're doing a double-sided project, you will see two icons that represent how the material will be flipped and which side of the material you are currently working on. The little arrows represent the current section. If they are up and down, then it will flip the material vertically. If the arrows are left to right, then it will flip it horizontally. This can always be changed in the Job Setup menu if you need it. To toggle to the opposite side of the material, you can hit this button and you can see that the arrow switches from pointing at the top to pointing at the bottom, and our rulers turn yellow for an additional indicator that we've moved to the bottom of the material. Simply click it again to go back to the top, or use the keyboard and hit the numbers 1 and 2 to see the top or bottom respectively. Next we have a layer menu that allows you to quickly switch between layers and turn them on or off. It will always default to layer 1 when you begin. Here we have a set of three snapping toggle switches, Geometry Snapping, Smart Snapping, and Grid Snapping. 
Geometry snapping moves the cursor to certain positions when drawing. It snaps to object centers, endpoints, midpoints, intersections, and such. Smart snapping provides you with guides while drawing or moving objects to help you align things. Grid snapping puts a grid of points on the material to help you with spacing and such. We'll go more in depth into the snapping options in a later video, but generally I prefer to leave geometry and smart snapping on while working unless it's hindering something specific I'm trying to do, in which case a quick click turns it off and then I turn it back on when I'm done. Next we have some viewing buttons that change the way things are displayed on your material. When selected, the Pan 2D View button allows you to grab the material and move it around with the mouse. You can select the Zoom to Box button to select an area to zoom in on. Just click the button, then draw a box around the desired area with your mouse, and it will fit just that selection to the entire viewing area. The same can be done by pressing the Z key. The Zoom to Drawing Limits button changes the view to include everything you have on the piece, allowing you to see everything at once. You can also do this by hitting the F key. And finally, the Zoom to Selection button allows you to select an object and zoom in on it, which can also be done using Control F. Here we have 2D toolpath drawing toggles. The first is visibility, determining whether the toolpath lines are shown at all. The second determines whether it displays as lines or as a solid shape. Note that these only affect toolpaths that are currently marked as visible in your toolpath toolbar. And here we have the toggle for showing the material thickness in the 3D view. Finally, these two buttons allow you to split the viewing area between the 2D and 3D views. The first button splits it horizontally, and the second vertically. Page up and page down keys will also take you to these views. On the right side of the screen, you have the toolpath toolbar with the matching swap and hide buttons as the one on the left. Now down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a long bar that goes across the entire length of the display. Over here, we have the word ready. This always displays the status of the software, now telling us that it is ready for any operation you want. Typically, you will only see it change when you're calculating more involved things like toolpaths, nesting, or arrays. Here we have the X and Y value of the current cursor placement. This can be very valuable if you're looking for ultimate precision in placing things on your material. You can see as I move my mouse from the left to the right, the X value changes dramatically while the Y value stays roughly the same. The opposite is true if I move my cursor in a straight up and down fashion. The Y value changes a lot while the X value remains similar. If I could do an exact line, it would remain zero, but I can't. For these measurements, the center of the material is considered zero, zero, and the numbers indicate the distance traveled away from that center point. And finally, if you have an object currently selected, you will see an exact dimensions and the layer it is on listed here. Selecting multiple objects will give you the dimensions of the boundary of all the selected objects. Now that we know where everything is, let's move on to the first set of buttons in the drawing toolbar. The heading is File Operations, and it contains 11 different tools. New allows you to create a new document. This can also be done by going to File New or by hitting Control N on your Windows keyboard. Open allows you to open a file and can also be done through File Open or using the keyboard shortcut of Control O. Save allows you to save your work and also has options under File and the keyboard shortcut of Control S. Now it's important to note that this will save the entire project as a Vectric file, which is extension .crv. This does not create any information that your machine will understand. It is just a way to save your design work for future editing and such. Next, we have the Import Vector button. 
If you already have a vector file, you use this button to pull it into vCarve. The most standard vector file type is .svg. You can also use this button to import other compatible file types such as .dxf, .dwg, .eps, .ai, and .pdf. Files from other Vectric products and even SketchUp can be imported as well. The vector will be whatever size it was made, so some resizing is usually needed. The Import Bitmap tool can be used to bring a picture into your space. While the button says Import for Tracing, you can also import a picture to use as a reference tool. Here is the list of image types that can be imported with this tool. For a more detailed explanation, check out our Trace Bitmap tool and cleanup video, linked up top. Now for one of the most important tools in the software, we have the Job Setup tool. This tool automatically opens when you create a new project, but this button allows you to change the settings at any time, though it may require you to recalculate your tool pass if you've already created some. Let's take a closer look at the options here. First is the job type. You can select whether your project is single or double-sided, or if you're creating a rotary file. Simply put, are you going to carve on just the top, the top and the bottom, or is it a rotary project? It is important to select the right option here because certain features are only available to certain job types. The job size section lets you put in the width, height, and thickness of the material you're carving on. In general, when looking at the machine straight on, the width will be the left to right or the X axis, and the height will be the front to back or the Y axis, while the thickness is up and down or the Z axis. You can also change the unit measurement if you prefer metric, and this will change the measurements for the entire project. Z zero position lets you decide if the tip of the tool will begin by touching the surface of the material or the machine bed. Which you use will depend on the project you're working on. I always zero to the material surface as I mostly carve designs in wood. It's my understanding that other projects that require precise thickness may benefit from zeroing to the machine bed. If you're working double-sided, you will have a zero off same side checkbox as an option, allowing you to determine if you want the software to use the same physical location for zeroing to either side. Next, we have XY datum position. What is a datum, you might ask? It's just a fancy way of saying starting point. Where do you want to start machining from? You can choose from any of the four corners, the lower left being the most popular, or from the center. Personally, we have found better accuracy and placement when we set the starting point to the center. We started using the lower left corner, but found that occasionally the measurements were a bit off and the result would be off center. By setting our starting point to the center, even if the measurement is off, it is off equally on each side. If you need a starting point other than one of those choices, you can offset it by checking this box and entering the values here. If you are working double-sided, here is where you will choose which direction your material flips. Design scaling is a feature that lets you change the size of your design to match your new job dimensions. Just check the box and the design will automatically change to fit the new space. Modeling resolution will only come into play when you are using 3D models in your project. The settings allow you to choose between speed and quality. The slower you set the resolution, the more quality and detail you will be able to get from your models. Appearance allows you to change the look of your preview model to better match your final project. Finally, we come to the common editing tools that most of us are used to by now. We have the cut, copy, and paste features found in most softwares that can be done with the typical shortcuts of Control X for cut, Control C for copy, and Control V for paste. If you're not familiar, the cut feature removes an object from the project but saves it temporarily. You can then paste the feature to place the object again. Copy does the same thing, only it doesn't remove the original, it just makes a copy of the object for you to paste in the document. If you're making a change you're not sure about, I highly recommend making a copy of the object so you will always have the original to come back to if it doesn't go well. Finally, we have the all-important undo and redo buttons. 
This allows you to quickly correct a mistake you make while working on your project. If you accidentally grab the wrong thing, or delete something you didn't mean to, you can simply hit the undo button and your mistake is magically corrected. Okay, maybe it's not magic, but it can definitely be a lifesaver when something unexpected happens. If you only memorize one keyboard shortcut, I would recommend it be Control Z to undo the inevitable mistakes that will happen. I'm not sure how many steps back the undo can go, but I've tested it to at least 25 moves that it will undo. Now, if you manage to undo something and then change your mind and want it back, that's where the redo function comes in. You can hit the redo and it will step forward again. In essence, undoing the undo. This can not only be used to correct mistakes, but if there's a change you aren't sure about, you can make the change, then hit undo and redo to see it both ways and decide which you like better. So that's a brief overview of the general layout and file operations in Vetric vCarve Pro. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below and keep an eye out for the next video in this basic series. And until next time, have fun and stay safe in the shop.